college ball for 10 years in the 80s and early 90s. One state, two teams, who collided in two titanic meetings, simply known as wide right. 35-yard field goal to win it. Good snap. Here's the kick. It is up. It is no good. Florida State trails 19-16. The snap is back. The kick is on the way. It is no good. Wide to the right. The game is over. Since those fateful games, Florida State has dominated the rivalry physically and emotionally, winning six of seven, including five straight. Now the Canes are once again ready to challenge the Seminoles and reclaim their spot among the nation's elite. Florida State is on a 15-year run of sustained excellence. Today, the Canes provide a roadblock on their path to a repeat national title as the Knolls continue their pursuit to join the greatest teams in college football history. Florida State undefeated and 5-0, and oh, ranked number one. Miami 3-1 and one, and ranked number seven. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist. Welcome to the Orange Bowl. This rusty old relic is vibrating in anticipation of the renewal of one of the most intense rivalries in all of college football. Miami against Florida State. Think about this. In the last 14 years, 10 times one team or the other has played for the national championship. And here come the Seminoles. Here comes Miami. Joined by Todd Blackledge. Todd, the big question, of course, coming into the game, the status of Chris Winkie, the Florida State quarterback. Well, Vernie had a severely sprained left foot in their last game against Maryland. It happened not in a sack. He was sacked four times, but he stepped in a hole early in the game. Now he's got two good things going for him. Number one, the injury happened nine days ago on a Thursday night instead of a week ago. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't play today. The other thing is, it's his left foot. And for a right-handed quarterback, that's very significant. His plant foot is okay. The left foot, a little more of a problem. Well, Bobby Bowden said it would be a game-time decision as to whether or not he could go. Let's uh, get a checkup right now and go down to the sidelines to Jill Arrington. That's right. Chris Wanky did not practice much earlier in the week because of that sprained left foot. He had a mobile cast on it. He had very little mobility. He couldn't put a lot of pressure on it. But Thursday, he went through a full practice. He said he felt pretty good. There was no swelling after practice on Thursday. I talked to him yesterday. He's around 90%, he says. The coach, Rick, just told me he will start the game today. Now, they're going to put some extra protection, some extra padding on that foot to try to keep him in the game. And I'm going to keep an eye on him. Back to you guys. All right, Jill, thank you. And, of course, there's a big edge in experience, Florida State versus Miami. Well, there's some similarities between the two quarterbacks in this ballgame. Both Chris Wanky and Ken Dorsey have played extremely well through the first month of the season. Both are unquestionably the leaders of their teams and hold the key to their chances today and a run at a national championship. But there are some obvious differences as well. First of all, you start with just the age. Chris Wanky is nine years older than Ken Dorsey. Both guys have put up good numbers, only one loss as a starter. Maybe the most significant number also that doesn't show up. Chris Wanky is 2-0 against the Miami Hurricanes. For Ken Dorsey, this is his first meeting against Florida State. He was tested in Washington. He'll be much more severely tested today against the Seminoles. And Miami won the toss. So Florida State will kick off. Andre Johnson, number five, one of the two deep men. And Darrell Jones, number, Jones, number one, joins him. There's the kick. collision at the 23 Jones fumbles who got it I think Florida, Florida State Bolden. got it Ronald Bolden of Florida State is the guy who's going to come up with the football which Davis told us yesterday we can't get beat on the special teams actually Charles Howard I think is the guy who came up with the ball but watch the opening kickoff a big hit 
by Michael Boulware. Knocks the ball loose, and on the opening play of the game, a huge break in the kicking game for Florida State. Howard comes up with a recovery. Florida State first down just inside the 25. And here's the 28-year-old senior hampered by the bad sprain in his left foot, Chris Winky. Backs are in the eye. Flip formation right side. The handoff goes up the middle to Travis Miner and the senior inside the 20. Let's check the Florida State offense, and it is potent. Up front, Brent Williams gets the start with Ammon, Jared Moon, Otis Duhart, and Sharon Dorsey. Carlos Thomas will also rotate at the tackle spot. And the hurry-up offense, Minor, McCray, Menace, Morgan, and Franklin, they're at the line on second down. Minor gets the handoff, and that's going to be a yard short of the first down at the 16. Tackle made by Howard Clark, number 45. Miami's defense... Quincy Hips, Damian Lewis is starting. He's bothered by a broken bone in his right foot. William Joseph and Jamal Green. Dan Morgan is en route to become the all-time leading tackler in Miami history. And the secondary just might be as good as any secondary in the country. Rump, Blades, Reed, and Myers. 32. They try to pull back. And William McRae, I believe, is stopped short. <laughs> A huge answer by the Miami defense after the turnover, bringing up fourth down. And Damian Lewis, everybody talked about Chris Wanky's injury this week, but Damian Lewis's injury, a broken toe on his right foot, just as significant to the Miami cause. He is the best interior defensive lineman in this ball game, a real disruptor. He did not play against Rutgers. But he's in there trying to go today. And Marcus Outson replaces Chris Winky as they go for it on fourth and one. He is on a good day, the more mobile of the two. Quarterback sneak right side. I do not know. FSU has scored on four or five opening drives this year. The one time they were stopped was a drop pass on fourth and one against Louisville. One of the secrets to run the quarterback sneak paused just a half a second to allow the surge to go. Pretty good penetration by the Miami defense, but in that situation, not much yardage needed for Marcus Outson. Butch Davis in his sixth season as the head coach at Miami. Now let's see if his uh, indication is correct. Good read. They stopped him. Take a look now at the penetration right over the right guard is where they were going to try to go. Watch the penetration right here at the point of attack. You got to stay low. You got to drive into the backfield and met head on right at the point of attack. William Joseph, the sophomore out of Miami Edison High School. Great penetration and a huge stop on fourth down by the Hurricanes. So on first down, here comes the 19-year-old sophomore quarterback, Ken Dorsey, out of California. Backs in the yard. And he'll hand it off. James Jackson goes right. And he surges across the 25-yard line. Bradley Jennings, number 44, makes the tackle. Here is the sophomore. Six and one as a starter. Had a really tough go in Seattle against Washington. Three turnovers in the first half. Came back strong and then played well on the road against West Virginia. And you look at that, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions for a young quarterback. That speaks volumes of his quarterback savvy and maturity. And off Jackson. And he gets five yards back. Butch Davis telling us yesterday how important the ground game is. He said, we might see a lot of really terrific four-yard runs. Here's the offensive line. McKinney, who has the tough task today. LaFaire, Romberg, Bibla, and Joaquin Gonzalez. James Jackson, Najee Davenport. The wideouts are Moss and Wayne. Ivan Mercer, the tight end. Second down and 10. This is Davenport coming to the left side. And Dorsey to throw, flips it across to Davenport. And he gets yardage to the 33. Defensively now for Florida State. And we mentioned McKinney's tough reason, uh, job. It's Jamal Reynolds. He has 10 sacks on the year. Darnell Dockett, Jeff Womble, and David Warren. 
Tommy Pauley, Bradley Jennings, and Brian Allen are the linebackers. And in the secondary, LeVan Thomas, Chris Hope, Derek Gibson, and Tay Cody. This is about as quick a defensive team as you'll find in the country. That's Daryl Jones in motion number one. And he may have moved early. This is Najee Davenport. But I think Miami's going to be guilty of uh, illegal motion. Yeah, Daryl Jones went in motion and then was in uh, some kind of hurry to get downfield. That brings on Clavan Thomas to return the punt of Freddie Capshaw. Capshaw has had an excellent season thus far. He's only had seven returned, and the longest return against him has been three yards. We'll see what Thomas can do for Florida State. Here's Capshaw. Nice and high. And caught. Well, there's the longest return of the season. Fumble! Loose ball at the 47. And can Miami return the favor? Yes, they can. Andre King, number 84. Big ball game, you gotta secure the football. It's ripped out by Dan Morgan. He's all over the field, and another big play for the senior linebacker. Turnovers now even at one apiece, 10.46 to go, first quarter. The 17th forced turnover thus far this year. Yeah, they've Miami. improved over the last four years each year, and they're on a record pace this year with forcing turnovers. I think they got to try to get Santana Moss involved in the game quickly here with this good field position. And on Jackson, quick opener, got some room down the 22-yard line. Tommy Pauley, number 29, the outstanding linebacker, makes the tackle. But Jackson running well. Big key to this ball game, can Miami run the football? I think they need to gain at least 100 yards. That puts the pressure on these guys up front, the offensive line. Butch Davis says he thinks physically this is the best offensive line that they've had since he's been here. But they're young and they're untested a little bit. But so far, opening some nice creases for James Jackson. In the fi last five games, all losses to FSU. They have not rushed for 100 yards. Here's the play fake. Down the middle. Down the court. Touchdown, Miami. <laughs> said the fullback against Florida State sometimes gets lost. Watch Davenport slip right through the middle of the defense, unaccounted for. They're conscious of the wide receivers, the tight ends, but nobody picks up the fullback Davenport, the number three receiver, and a touchdown. Touchdown reception by Davenport, set up by the fine running thus far. Extra point is good. Miami goes 47 yards after recovering the fumble on the punt return, and Najee Davenport scoops down the middle, a perfectly executed play fake by Dorsey. And a quick footnote, the team that has scored first has had the better of it. The only difference there, I think, was 92, was yeah. it not? That was the second of the wide right games, wide right two. Here's Todd Seaver's kick, and boy, does he get his foot into this one. Wow. Not only eight yards deep, but way up in the air. He is the consummate field general, Vern. I mean, he has a great feel for this offense. He's in total command of what they're doing. He runs the no huddle. A valuable, valuable asset to this team. At midfield, they spread it out, and out of the backfield, incomplete. Little flare pattern to Travis Miner. Four-man rush by Miami that time. And uh, Marquise Fitzgerald, number 27, was covering, and he'll now come to the bench second and ten. Now, this offense, we should make the point, it's a no huddle, but it's not a hurry up. But they constantly give you the threat of going on a quick count, so they keep the pressure on you defensively. Back in the eye, Winky with the change at the line of scrimmage. Eight-man front for Miami. Got to throw the football. He tosses to Miner instead. Miner finds some room and rips it down to the 45-yard line. 
tackle made by Al Blades and Chris Campbell. Nice audible this time by Chris Wanky. I mean, what he sees, you see eight guys here, but the main guy is Blades, the safety. And Wanky is going to audible away from the safety, the toss sweep away from the free safety, and they get a nice game. Third and four at the 44. Here they come again. Blades throwing, showing blitz. Wanky audible it. Twice. The blitz coming. A handoff to Meyer. He is stuffed. Fourth down. William Joseph, number 94, and Dan Morgan, number 44. Dan Morgan is a guy, I mean, he is what you consider a linebacker. If you look up linebacker in the dictionary, you see a picture of a guy like Dan Morgan fighting off the block by the fullback McCray and in to make the tackle. 16 tackles against West Virginia, 20 tackles against Washington, and a big one here for Butch Davis's defense. And on fourth down from the 45, Keith Cottrell is on to punt. 41-yard average for the season in Santana Moss. The ever-dangerous Santana Moss. Bearcats guard, and he grabs it at the 8-yard line. 36-yard punt and nothing on the return. 7-0. Kenny Dorsey has done a great job of making decisions and protecting the football. He needs to be smart here in his own territory deep. Here's Dorsey. Wants a punch. He's got a man. It's Santana Moss. And he is open for a huge game. And they've had some success running the football. Watch the play fake to Jackson, and they go right after Cookie Thomas, one of the better cornerbacks. But Santana Moss clearly a couple steps on him, and Dorsey gets him the football. Santana is the guy who can take over this game. He's got that kind of ability. They're getting him involved early. Handoff on first down. It goes to DJ Williams, number 17. You know, Bird, just to follow up on that, anybody that's played and has spent time around kickers, you know that kicking is about 85% mental and only about 15% physical. I mean, you obviously know he's got a good leg, a strong leg, or he wouldn't be here, but mentally, a little confidence shaking right now, and obviously Bobby Bowden, not great confidence in him as well. Second down and seven, D.J. Williams continues at fullback in front of Jackson. Now Dorsey goes deep. Oh, he's got a man. It's Ivan Mercer, the tight end. First and goal, Miami. A 31-yard game. The Florida State defense very concerned with D.J. Williams, the fullback, coming out in the flat, and they forgot the tight end. We've seen him forget the fullback down the middle. Now we see him forget the tight end, Mercer, down the middle of the defense. That's the end of the first quarter for the score, 7-0. We will return to the Orange Bowl after this message and this word from your local station. 7-0 Miami as we start the second quarter. And the Hurricanes, having gotten a touchdown pass to Najee Davenport, have now moved from their own 14 to a first and goal at the eight-yard line. Ken Dorsey, six of eight for 125 yards and two big pass plays on his current drive. Reggie Wayne starts in motion. And off to Jackson, who is stuffed behind the line, loses yardage back into the 10-yard line. Tackle is made by Jeff Womble, number 91. Well, we welcome you back to the Orange Bowl. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge. We uh, don't want to say we have a bunker mentality, but <laughs> it's a little, little comfy in here. Dorsey has been really cool. Yeah, he really has. And I thought it was very important that he played within himself in this ball game. He didn't have to try to be like one of the great former Miami quarterbacks. He just had to play his game. And I think he's done that. He has settled into the pace of the game, and he's making good decisions of where to go with the football. And here's one of the tight ends, Robert Williams. Play fake. They go into the corner for Reggie Wayne, and again, he was held up, and this time they throw the flag on Tay Cody. Wayne got a step. Nice call by Larry Coker. You bring two tight ends in, you bring the rest of the defense in, and you isolate one-on-one, -on -one. and you can see Wayne did a great job of escaping the bump-and-run coverage, and Tay Cody had no choice but to try to grab the jersey. Defense.
defensive holding call on Cody. Now Dorsey, as a starter, and this is his eighth start, has found Reggie Wayne in the end zone seven times, and then he has spread the goodies around. Eleven other receivers, one catch each. Now Andre King splits out wide to the left. Ivan Mercer and Robert Williams, the two tight ends, are tight right. This is Mercer, who had a big catch earlier in the drive, and he sets up tight left, where he will help on Reynolds. Here is James Jackson on first down to the four-yard line. A couple former uh, great quarterbacks, Bernie Kozar and Jim Kelly. Kelly with the, the visor and the sunglasses. Well, there have been comparisons made to Bernie Kozar about Ken Dorsey, yeah. and yesterday Butch Davis saying, listen, the kid needs to play with composure. He doesn't need to be compared to Kozar or any of the other ghosts yeah. who have uh, played quarterback here. But he does remind me a lot of Bernie, the way he plays. He's kind of lanky. He's very calm. Jackson to the two. It'll be third down and goal. So far in this first half, Miami has done exactly what they've wanted to do on offense. Have enough success running the football that you make them respect the run and you slow that pass rush down. The play action has been effective. They've faked a couple reverses to Santana Moss. A lot of little things to just take the edge off of Mickey Andrews' defense. Third and goal from the one. D.J. Williams is in at fullback and Jackson is the tailback. They hand it off to D.J. Williams. Touchdown for the heralded freshman out of California. That's his first touchdown as a hurricane. Some confusion for Florida State with the call and what personnel they wanted in. They were never lined up correctly. A lot of movement trying to get down in their stance by Florida State. And Miami got a good jump off the football, a good push on the right side to get Williams into the end zone. Dodd Severs with the extra point. It's up and good. And Miami leads by 14. D.J. Williams recruited as a linebacker. He can play both sides of the ball, as you've seen. Back of the Orange Bowl, where Miami is leading 14-0, and D.J. Williams got the TD. Well, we talked about the miscommunication. Look at Bradley Jennings, still trying to find out where they're supposed to line up. They ran right where he was supposed to be, got totally knocked into the end zone. A little miscommunication on the Florida State defense, and Miami in the end zone again. Todd Seavers getting ready to kick off. Davey Ford and Jeff Cheney. There's Cheney number one. Davey Ford wears 22. This one returnable. It'll be Ford at the one-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Carl Walker, number 38. Take a moment to stroll in the sun. <laughs> You know, historically, these two teams are great coverage teams because of the speed and athleticism. And that is getting it done on kickoff coverage right there. First and 10, 12.49 to go. Third quarter, Winky, play action, deep right side into double coverage. And that one, well overthrown. Florida State looks at a third and 13. They've yet to convert a third down, and they do so now. Attempted from their own five-yard line. Miami counters with six defensive backs, and Winky will go out of the shotgun. Four deep, and they're 20 yards deep. Here's Winky across the middle, and the tackle is made by Damian Lewis, number 92. So important to their defensive effort today. Well, Dan Morgan telling us yesterday, he can't remember when they put the bleachers out in the south end zone, which they did for this game. Yeah, 3,000 extra seats, indicating what a huge game in the anticipation that Miami fans have, that the Hurricanes are back, and this rivalry is back. And that crowd noise in this part of the end zone has forced some tough plays and a timeout. Keith Cottrell with his feet on the end line. Here comes the pressure. Santana Moss moves up, grabs it for 37. Jukes to the right, and a nice open field tackle is made at the 32-yard line. Six on the return for Santana Moss. 
Greg Ciano, defensive coordinator, likes to throw some junk at you on third down. This is Damian Lewis, the nose guard, the best pass rusher. But watch, in a zone blitz concept, he fakes the rush, drops back like a middle linebacker. Now watch the hit on Travis Miner. That's a nose tackle making that play. A big physical guy, but also very athletic. One of those old great cliches of football. But it's proving itself true today. Matt Moss out of the backfield, his fourth catch. And a check in once again with Jill Arrington. But DJ Williams got a great start back in high school thanks to his mom, Sherry Gonzalez. She was determined to give her son a good education, so she worked extra jobs to send DJ to a private high school in California, De La Salle High School. Now, he wasn't really with that choice at first. Sent his mom a letter, come on, mom, please let me stay at the school nearby. No, she said he went, and wow, did he really make a turnaround, and then he wrote a follow-up letter. Thanks, mom. He really appreciated that. And he excelled on the football field. He was USA Today Defensive Player of the Year, and look what he's doing now. All right, thank you, Jill. There's a handoff, Najee Davenport out of the backfield. Well, just to put the period of that paragraph, as a two-way player, D.J. Williams last year rushed for 1,900 yards. And he led his team with 133 tackles. Yep. He is a talented athlete. You know, the physical maturity beyond his years. And uh, he and the coaching staff felt he can contribute the quickest from a fullback position. He didn't play last week against Rutgers with a hip injury, but he is a valuable weapon coming out of the backfield as a runner or a receiver. Third and eight here after the loss of four. Here's a quick count. Reynolds is double teamed. The pass in the end zone incomplete for Santana Moss. And credit Jamal Reynolds for getting some pressure and forcing the quicker throw than Kenny Dorsey wanted to throw it. He was able to, to beat the pressure and get in there. And then you see isolated on the play. Good coverage by Tay Cody running him right to the back of the end zone. Takes a perfect throw to score on that one. Todd Sievers will get a second chance now. This one from 32 yards out. Aaron Moser is the holder, and Chris Harvey will snap it. Todd Sievers is added to the lead. Officially, they have called this one a 31-yarder. Miami with a 17-point lead right now. Chris Wanky, plenty of time here in the first half to try to cut into that lead. There's a kick by Sievers, Travis Miner, and Jeff Cheney are deep. This will be Travis Miner, number 23. And we have seen excellent coverage by the special teams of Miami today. That was 91 and 92. Florida State has won the last five. And they have, in fact, thumped Miami in those five. What a pop. Nick Maddox tried to make the catch, and Philip Buchanan delivered the tackle. Right now, Miami wants to keep everything in front of them. Bringing a little pressure, playing zone defense, and a big hit by Buchanan to knock the ball loose. Three defensive linemen again for Miami. Six DBs. That's Morgan in the line. He is coming with the rush. It's a four-man rush. Ball is tipped and incomplete. Damian Lewis, Dan Morgan, Jamal Green, Quincy Hips were the four who put the rush on them. This is a veteran offensive line of Florida State. Four out of the five guys seniors, and you can't allow that kind of pressure on your quarterback when they're only rushing three or four. They've got to do a better job up there. That was not good protection on that second down play for Chris Wanky. Out of the spread on third and ten. Zone blitz. They got to him. Quincy hits, but Winky slips and then throws it. Minutes is wide open. Snoop Minutes with a huge play. Florida State scores on this drive. This could be the play of the game for Florida State. Very close to having to punt again and go in at halftime down 17 to nothing. Watch him elude the pressure of Quincy Hips. He's done that three or four times today on a bad left foot and then across his body, feet not set. Perfect throw to Menace. 35-yard gain, 147 to go. FSU has one timeout left. 
Winky off his back foot, man coverage right sideline incomplete. Intended for Javon Walker with Buchanan covering that time. I'm impressed with this Miami secondary today. You know, they, they came into the season with a lot of accolades. A lot of the preseason publications rated them as the best group in the country. And they have shown me something today. They haven't given up anything easy to Florida State. Miami blitzing again. Picked off. A flag is down as well. So this one might be negated. Mike Rump with the interception at the play stands. Well, Snoop Minnis got up complaining that he was knocked down as Mike Rump went for the football. Minnis ended up on the ground, and Rump ended up with the football. It was a slant route again. We've seen Rump play pretty well on this slant route. Watch and see if he knocks him down first. He pulls the jersey, then he does push before he gets to the football. A lot of infighting between receivers and defensive backs in bump and run man-to-man -man coverage. And a first down and 10 Florida State. Bump and run coverage, you can make a lot of contact as long as that receiver's in front of you. If he gets behind you, you gotta keep your hands off of him. On first and 10, Winky looking left, drills it. Caught by A. Trues Bell at the 20 yard line. And he picks up an additional three yards as he works his way to the left. Jonathan Vilma, number 51, with a tackle. It has been 12 years, that memorable 88 game. 31 nothing was the final score in that one. That was the season opener, and it was number one against number two then. Ryan Sprague is in. Here's the cross. Cheney going right. Hurdles a tackle inside the 10 and down at the 9. Florida State only has one timeout, Vern, so we're under a minute now at 54 seconds. They've got to keep the thing moving here. Chris Wanky's going to try to save that timeout for as long as he can. If they get a first down, remember the clock will stop. Second and two. Slip it to the fullback, McCray. He's down at the five with the first down. Now the clock will stop until they set the chains. Chris Wanky may spike the football here, or he may try to call a play right here with 35 seconds left. But the Seminoles in good position to attack the end zone. Javon Walker late on in the field. Heads out to the right side. Too much time, Vern. Taking too much time. Wanky into the left corner. Incomplete. Intended for Bell. They are trying to run some personnel in late. Chris Wanky trying to change the play. That, that was a waste of time right there, and then the play was totally ineffective. Mark Rick trying to call the perfect play here because, again, if you run it and get stopped here, you don't have enough time to run your field goal team on the field and kick a successful field goal. So you have to throw on this third down play, and if it fails, incomplete, then you settle for the field goal. But they desperately want a touchdown right here. Winky talks with Jeff Cheney, who will be the deep back. William McCray is the fullback. Play clock is gone. It's down inside at 20 right now. Wanky just getting him out of the huddle. Carver Donaldson, number 88, the 13 tight end, is tight to the left. And a power formation. Play fake. Intercepted by Morgan. He could go all the way. He's got off by Morgan. There's Cheney who knocks him out of bounds. Two times in the red zone, Vern. They thought they could sneak the tight end in for an easy touchdown. They're trying to go right here, but watch Morgan read the play, get his hands on the football. Two times, Chris Wanky thought he had an easy touchdown to the tight end, flips it in there. Both times, he comes up empty. Dan Morgan, a huge play for the Hurricane defense. And Greg Ciano, right to the right of Butch Davis. With another huge defensive play to end the half. Let's go down to 
Jill Arrington. Coach Davis, your team came out with such aggressiveness. They've had their intensity level up the whole game. Are you pleased with that? Uh, we've, I'm really proud of the players. It's early in the game. There's 30 minutes left. I mean, this is, these are two good football teams. Our kids are playing our guts out. Dorsey doesn't look like the young quarterback that he is out there. Well, he's growing. In every possession, every game, he gets better. He's got a lot of poise and confidence. I think a lot of it comes from the fact that our coaching staff and our kids believe in him. Even though you've controlled the time of the possession, when your defense gets out there, they get it done. Are you pleased with that? Well, Florida State's going really fast. They're, they're fast huddling us, and we got to keep our defensive guys fresh. All right. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Another look at Dan Morgan, his second interception of the year. None bigger than this one. Miami leads top-ranked Florida State by 17 as we get started of quarter number three. And let's uh, go down and check in with Jill Arrington. Coach Bowden, your team struggled a little bit to get the momentum going in the Orange Bowl. What are you going to have to do to get in this game? we got to score. We're taking the ball down there and not to throw an interception. We've been in the end zone twice and, and turned it over. We simply have got a score. I, I think we're doing okay other than that. But well, Wanky's throwing two interceptions. Is the foot affecting him at all? Uh, I don't think it's affecting him. The, the lack of preparation might be affecting him. But it's some of that, they just they did a good job of anticipating what we were going to do. We, we threw a couple of passes we haven't thrown before. Didn't think they'd be aware of them. And they picked them off. They're just, they're doing a great job. All right. Thank you a lot, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. 17 nothing last time. Florida State was behind by two was just a little over a year ago at Clemson. They trailed 14 to three at the half but came back to win that game. And a comparison to the quarterbacks, Todd Blackwood. Yeah, the biggest thing that stands out right there, the two interceptions by the more experienced guy, Chris Wanky. Bobby Bowden mentioned, uh, thought they had some easy touchdowns trying to get the ball to the tight end, but Miami came up and made two big plays to get interceptions. Florida State will receive to open quarter number three. Todd Seavers will do the kicking, George. And the deep duo for Florida State, number one, Jeff Cheney, and number 23, Travis Miner. Miner over the shoulder, and that'll be a touchback, Florida State. Well, 17 nothing. It was a year ago, 21-21 at the uh, at the end of the first half of play. Yeah, Miami scored 21 points last year and then got shut out in the second half. And as you mentioned, the big difference, Florida State scored right with them last year was 21-21 at halftime. So a big hole for Chris Wanky and the Florida State offense right now. And Vern, I really think if Florida State is to get back in this game, Travis Miner has to become a factor in the second half. Only 10 yards rushing in the first half and no receptions coming out of the backfield. Miami defense has excelled in the third quarter. Here is Miner, big run to open the second half. He takes a pop up high from Al Blades, number seven. But a gain of 14. Nice block by the fullback, William McCray. Travis Miner is a guy who is hoping to become the first guy to ever lead the Seminoles in rushing four years in a row. I mean, he plays big in big games, but he has been quiet so far today. Here's the toss right side to Miner. Cut back. Avoids one tackle from Chris Campbell and then runs into Edward Reed. Let's uh, break it down statistically at the end of the first two quarters. The turnovers, very significant. And turnovers favor Miami. The time of possession, a big thing for Miami. That's why that Florida State defense got a little tired there. And Florida State, one of seven on third downs in the first half didn't help matters either. Hey, Drew Bell is on the field now in the slot to the right side. It's first and ten. Five defensive backs in for the Hurricanes. Winky out of the spread, faces a blitz. Quick delivery right side to Bell. He circles inside, breaks a tackle, breaks another, and Buchanan holds him down. It's first and goal, Florida State. A gain of 42. For so often, when you see big plays in the passing game, it doesn't have to be the 40-yard throw down the field. In a man-to-man -man coverage situation, if you catch the football and elude one tackler, as Bell did here, you can turn a short throw into a big gain. Now watch Buchanan try to smack the ball out at the end, and Bell does a nice job feeling it from behind and protecting the football. Marquise Fitzgerald missed the tackle. First and goal. 
Winky in the spread again. Lobs it out to Miner, chased by three men. And again, he avoids the tackle of Edward Reed and Marquise Walker and cuts inside for an additional gain inside the five. Travis Miner very involved in this first drive to start the second half. This is the playbook play we showed you earlier. Look downfield. If it's not there, flip it out to your back and let him make somebody miss in the open field. He does that very well. He eludes a couple of Hurricane defenders out there, and now good position. Hand off, Travis Miner. Stopped at the one. Second and goal. Dan Morgan, number 44, makes the tackle. You know, one of the problems I think that Florida State has had in, in the last several years is they do so much from the shotgun and they throw the ball so well and they pass block so well, it's really tough for offensive linemen to all of a sudden then shift gears in a goal line situation and really get that good push that you need to run the football. That's, that's been a problem for them for a couple years. It's tough to be good at pass blocking and run blocking at the same time. Chad Nader comes in as an extra blocking back. He lines up to the left side. Miner is the deep back. Miner gets the toss and the lead block, and he's knocked down at the one. Morgan and Edward Reed. Quincy Hips with great pressure inside, getting the penetration. Watch Hips right here get across the line and just destroy this play. He doesn't get the tackle, but he was there first and made the play go the other way. Dan Morgan there to finish it up. Hips gets the penetration, and Morgan doesn't miss tackles when he gets there. Bobby B Bowden will call on the freshman, Matt Munyon, two of five, kicking field goals this year. This one is hammered home. Said we're not going to get down there and not score again. He told Jill right before the half, we've got to score. Well, they've got three. They wanted seven, but they'll take three. FSU is on the board. A 17-3 score now. Florida State getting a little encouragement, I would think, from that opening drive. Yeah. Very encouraging, and I'm sure Mickey Andrews on the Florida State sideline doing the same thing with his defense. They need a big stop here. This will be Jones at the 10. Slips one tackle and is down at the 25 yard line. From which point Miami comes on offense. First down and 10 as Jim Kelly enjoys his team's effort. And off to Jackson. One yard out to the 25 yard line. Second down. The toss to Jackson on a sweep. Good pursuit defensively, and he uh, does manage to get just one yard as Bradley Jennings, number 44, makes the duck. And I've been struck also, Todd, that we have not called the name of Jamal Reynolds much at all. Yeah. They've done a good job of running the football enough to use play action. They've brought some different people at them. They've rolled away from them a little bit. You know, Miami has not done a whole lot of just straight drop back where the quarterback has either been in a shotgun or in a set position all the time. And, and they've kind of taken him out of the ball game because of that. Reynolds with one tackle thus far going up against Brian McKinney. Play fake, shovel pass. Good defensive pursuit. <laughs> Chris Woods, number 98. And this is another way that you take that rush away. You invite him up the field this time. Nobody even blocks Jamal Reynolds because they want to run the shovel pass underneath him. He can't make the play on the shovel pass, but someone else did. Chris Woods does a nice job chasing from the backside, as does Tommy Polly, and they get the good pursuit. Ready catch up on the punt. Nick Maddox drifting over to his right. It will go out of bounds before he can retrieve it. And it is ruled out of bounds at the 41-yard line. A 33-yard punt. Nada on the return. 9-17 to go. Third quarter. Jeff Cheney is on. Winky goes from the shotgun. Stunts by the front four by Amy. Rifle down. Caught by Anquan Bolden. No flags. Touchdown, FSU. Just what Mark Rick and the Florida State offense needed. Al Blades 
was victimized on that play. The free safety, the senior, it's cover two. The corner is going to ride him for a little bit, then turn him loose to the safety. And Al Blades went for the interception. Bad angle. And Bolden makes the catch and the run. Bad angle by the free safety, Al Blades. Munyan with the extra point. And that is not a given for Matt Munyon. He has missed three this year. And Quan Bolden's first touchdown of the season. It's a 17-10 game. And there is another of the Heisman candidates for the year, Chris Winkie, the 28-year-old senior quarterback. A 48-yard touchdown pass to Anquan Bolden. Chris, uh, who does like to dial a yeah. long distance. <laughs> He's got some guys that can run and fetch it, and he likes to throw those deep touchdowns. And all of a sudden now, out of the locker room, we have seen the explosiveness of the Seminole offense. And if you think that defense was geared up the last series, you wait and see him out there this time. Chance Gwaltney will kick off for the Seminoles. Daryl Jones and Andre Johnson of a deep two. This one will be taken by Jones. He runs up and grabs it at the 10. Heads right. Turtles, one man, oh boy. He was nearly gone. Cookie Thomas may have saved the touchdown. Good way to stem that tide and get the momentum back. A good kick return, Daryl Jones. And as you said, Vern, I mean, this is one guy away from going to the end zone. As it is, Miami with a good start and a good field position here outside the 35-yard line. Let's see what they can do after the Jones effort. They were three and out on the opening series of this half. Not Jay Davenport, now a tailback, and D.J. Williams is the fullback. Dorsey steps up, fires it to D.J. Williams. He's got a first down at the 46-yard line. <laughs> Let's check in with Jill Arring, Arrington. I talked to the Miami training staff. Dan Morgan is in the locker room suffering dehydration. So is James Jackson. They're both in there receiving fluids, but they should return to the game soon. All right, Jill. Thank you. Those are two critical players for this Miami team on both sides of the ball. That was a good job by D.J. Williams protecting the football a little bit better than the last time. Dorsey, Najee Davenport. Look at him struggle and fight. Back inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Derek Gibson makes the stop. On second down, play fake. Dorsey got a man wide open. Robert Williams. First down at the 30-yard line. Beautiful job of deception in the backfield by Dorsey. And again, they had the huge run by Najee Davenport. The good, tough run. Now they go play action, run the bootleg, and nobody picks up. Robert Williams. Take a look at this now. You sell the fake, Robert Williams is going to slip out here and nobody's going to find him. Run the ball, then play action. Run the ball, then play action. And a nice, easy throw and catch. Reggie Wayne goes wide right. Jones is wide left. First and 10 at the 29. Play fake again. Dorsey drills it. Got a man, Daryl Jones. At the 23-yard line. Second down and four here. Hurricanes cling to a seven-point lead. 4.20 to go, third quarter. They slip it to the fullback, D.J. Williams, inside the 20. That's uh, going to be close for the first and 10. You know, this D.J. Williams has got some push behind him as a freshman. I mean, he's 235 pounds, but every time he hits it up in there on the inside, the pile moves forward. I mean, you don't see him getting knocked back very much. He is a very physically developed and strong kid for as young as he is. Came out of that great program in De La Salle and good strength and conditioning program there. He came onto a college campus uh, ready to contribute right away. Third and one, probably less than a yard needed to move the chain. Davenport is the deep back in the eye. And Dorsey will throw, goes for the corner for Reggie Wayne. Thomas defending. It'll be fourth down. 
Remember, Thomas was out for a couple plays. After being injured a little bit, he's back in and head up on Reggie Wayne. And what Thomas does so well here is know that, hey, I've got the sideline that I can use as an extra defender. Keep pushing him to the sideline, forcing him to the outside, and the ball just a little too far outside for Reggie Wayne. Good job of Cleveland Thomas using the sideline to help him. Todd Sievers is one of two kicking field goals today. The redshirt sophomore tries this from 37 yards away. Got it just inside the right upright. Young man who came from Ankeny, Iowa to gather in a little sun and play for the Hurricanes. Todd Sievers will kick off. Miami up by 10. 3.28 to go. Quarter number three. This is the eighth time, a ninth time, I beg your pardon, that these two teams have met when both were ranked in the top ten. The ninth time, and Miami has won five of the previous eight. They lead it by ten here. That one out of bounds. I'll move it back. Butch Dave is trying to say that Travis Miner tipped the ball before it went out of bounds, but the official right there had a little better shot of it than Butch did, I think. Let's see what kind of shot we've got. Here's a look. Did he or did he not? Oh. 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 Wow. That, uh, that's debatable. <laughs> Maybe Butch had a pretty good view. I know Travis Miner did not argue with the call. Got out of the way in a hurry. What a pop. Jeff Cheney hit by Jonathan Vilma, who is playing in the spot normally occupied by Dan Morgan. Morgan continues to get treatment for dehydration. Vilma, a freshman high schooler out of Coral Gables, Florida. There are 28 guys on, this, on these respective sidelines. 28 who played against each other in one combination or another in high school. Right side, caught, Bolden almost breaks the tackle again of Al Blades. It was Bolden and Blades who got together on what uh, became a touchdown. Good read by Chris Wanky. This is a corner blitz. And so Al Blades has to come over and make coverage. Watch the corner blitz here. That means he's got to come over and play man to man. Wanky sees it, Bolden sees it, and they get rid of the football quickly. And he almost turns it into a big play again. Blades able to hang on to the jersey. So that is the end of three with our score. 20 to 10. We'll return to the Orange Bowl right after this message. And a word from your local station. Those of a certain vintage, those of us, and uh, a degree of accrued wisdom, recall Jackie Gleason, his theme song, Melancholy Serenade, and how terrific his show was from over in Miami Beach. We begin quarter number four. Winky will get the snap from the 43 on first and 10. Safety blitz. Winky, deep right side. A flag is down. The ball is not loose, intended for menace at the 13-yard line. Leonard Myers with good coverage. So a lot going on in that play. Flag thrown deep in the Miami secondary. Participation on the defense. 12 men on the field. 15 yards. First down. It's a good way to slow down the Seminole offense. Move. Play with 12 if you can get away. With it. Take a look here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Can't do that. 20 to 10. Florida State down. Three wide outs. Two backs, Winky into the flat, one-on-one -on -one out there. Cheney slips a tackle of Buchanan, then slips another tackle of Vilma and is finally down at the 29-yard line as Buchanan came back. Nice-looking drive for Florida State, but the thing you have to remember, the clock is still moving. It's, it's four minutes and 30 seconds now. We're just getting there, 4.30 for Florida State, and they have to score twice, down by 10. Second down and four. Florida State has two timeouts left. On 
second and four. Cheney wiggles to the right, cuts back for a first down at the 23-yard line. Al Blades with the tackle for Miami. And the clock stops momentarily while the first down chain is reset. I think Florida State needs to speed things up again. Again, this is a no huddle offense, not necessarily a hurry up offense. But I think they need to go into hurry up mode here so that they can score quickly and then not have to worry about onside kick or anything. Kick the football and play defense. But of course, they have to score a touchdown first. Three down lineman Morgan rushing with the linebackers. This one in the flat from Miner. And Buchanan forces him out of bounds, which does stop the clock with a second less than four minutes remaining. Second and five. Robert Morgan laid on to the field. He's in the slot to the right. Miami rushes three. Winky drills it toward the goal line. Bolden first and goal at the four-yard line after the catch. But they're down in their dead zone again, Vern. Inside the five-yard line, they have not been very good down here so far in the ball game. Look at them in the red zone. Five possessions, zero touchdown. Travis Miner, the deep back in the eye. They slip it to the fullback, McCray. He gets two. It'll be second and goal at the two. 3.45 remaining. And that's just fine with Greg Schiano because even if they score, if they stop them on a couple plays, it just means more time getting eaten off the clock. We're down at three minutes and 30 seconds now, and again, not a lot of urgency on the part of Florida State. Menace and Morgan wide right, Bolden to the left. Winky throws the fade in the end zone and overthrows Menace, who was well covered by Leonard Myers. Third down. Eighty thousand nine hundred here for the rematch FSU and Miami Nick Maddox comes on the field now he'll be a slot to the left on third and goal Miami rushes three into the end zone, touchdown, Bolden, his second of the day. Burn three-man rush is all, and they drop eight. You shouldn't be able to find an easy seam when they're dropping eight with no depth to cover, but Bolden able to find a little hole in there and get the touchdown. The extra point is not a given, but Munyon does knock it home. And that cuts the lead to three. 20 to 17. Three minutes and 15 seconds left in regulation. Anquan Bolden with his second touchdown catch. One 48 yards, this one two yards. A nine-play Florida State drive now. 3.15 to go. Both teams, two timeouts left. FSU with a 17-game win streak on the line. If you're Florida State here, Vern, you're thinking, let's get great coverage, make them start inside the 20, and then hope our defense can get the ball back quickly. If you're Miami, you're saying, James Jackson, you've been our horse today. You got hydrated in the locker room. We need you right now on this drive. Here's Chance Waltney's kick. Comes left. Touchback. Mickey Andrews, the longtime defensive coordinator with Bobby Bowden at Florida State. Jackson and Davenport are the backs in the eye. And the formation tight to the left. They're throwing. And incomplete. Are you surprised? A little bit, I am. Uh, you know, that, that stops the clock. But I know Larry Coker's thinking, hey, Florida State's expecting us to run the football. Let's see if we can get a quick one, a big first down on the first play. Watch the pressure inside and see who gets a hand on the football. 
I think it was Brian Allen, the linebacker, was the guy who got his hand on the football. There it is right there and knocked it away from the receiver, Wayne. And now second down and 10. Dorsey yet to throw an interception this season. Reggie Wayne starts in motion. Now we'll come back to the right. Now they hand it off to Jackson. Looks for yardage. Surges across the 25 and is down at the 26. Brings up a third and four with 2.55 to go in the clock running. Florida State has two timeouts left. So they'll try to save them as long as they can. Second game of the doubleheader coming up from Starkville. Auburn against Mississippi State. Third and four. Moss comes right. Wayne goes left. Jackson and Davenport behind Dorsey. Play of the ball game right here, Burns. FSU sending four. Quick flip. Davenport gets a downfield block. Fumbles the ball. A scramble at the 48. Who got it? Florida State. Brian Allen. Burn, I said this was going to be the play of the ball game, and it may very well be. It looked like Miami was perfect. Najee Davenport, the catch across the middle. Easy first down and more, but watch the end of the play. The ball gets stripped out. Tay Cody rips it out, and Brian Allen falls on it. Started out like a great play for Miami, maybe a backbreaker. Turns into a golden opportunity for the Seminole. Tay Cody, the senior. Ryan Allen, the senior. Coming through for Mickey Andrews' defense. 2.14 to go. Ball at the 48. Winky at quarterback. Three wideouts and two running backs. And again, Miami will rush only three. Winky, right side, drop McCray. Second and ten. 2.10 to go. My, oh my. <laughs> we knew it was going to be good, didn't we, partner? <laughs> Second and ten. Winky drifting back, looking deep left side. Venice is wide open at the 35. He moves the ball inside the 30 to the 29 as Dan Morgan went for the Tomahawk. And how big is that missed field goal looming now? They're down three. Plus, what's Bobby Bowden thinking? Are we looking to send this to overtime and try another field goal? Or are we going to really play aggressively for a touchdown? I think they're playing aggressively for the touchdown and try to win it on this possession. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. Now four-person rush. Winky pumps once, comes out, lobs it for McCray and completes second and 10 again. 1.43 to go. Recall that Matt Munyon, the freshman walk-on, Missed a field goal from 22 yards out earlier. What must be going through his mind now? That was the field goal attempt, and it was ugly. Second and ten. Six DBs. Play fake. Winky down the middle. Got a man. Touchdown! Acres Bell! interception same play down the middle of the field to a bell he overthrew it it was intercepted by ed reed this time perfect throw to bell in the middle of the field touchdown florida state extra point is up and good chris winky said he came back to try and win a second national title the tramp still may be alive 24-20, Florida State. For two again. These safeties here, big open spot in the middle. A truce bell on the post pattern. Wanky missed him earlier in the game. This time, perfectly thrown, and Bell takes it into the end zone. 
Chris Wanky, 450 yards passing now, three touchdowns to go along with those earlier interceptions. What a comeback by the senior quarterback. Here's the kick, Gwaltney. And they will run it out. Darrell Jones at the 20, at the 30, and out of bounds at the 32-yard line. The Hurricanes were up by 17 at the half. And seemingly had this one in control. There's Lewis. On a third and four, Najee Davenport catches a first down pass, has the ball at the 48-yard line, but is popped by Tay Cody, fumbles, and FSU comes from behind. Here's Dorsey, first and 10. Plenty of time left, Vern, a minute 32. Dorsey, Santana Moss, circles right, will try and get out of bounds, does. Derek Gibson with the tackle. Stops the clock with a first down at the 45, a gain of 13. This is Santana Moss time right here. I mean, before it was James Jackson's time trying to run the clock out. Now, this time belongs to Santana Moss. They made big plays. A field goal does them no good. They need a touchdown, and number six is a guy who can make some plays for them. Number six is in the slot right now, Santana Moss. Reggie Wayne just to his left. Here's Dorsey to his tight end, and Mercer backs out of bounds at the 49-yard line, and that conserves a little more time on the clock. It stops with 119 remaining. Nice job by Mercer getting out of bounds, and again, the poise of young Ken Dorsey. We've seen the poise of Chris Wanky, and we've seen the poise of Ken Dorsey today in his best challenge today, and this is it right now. The game is on the line, a minute 19, and he has two timeouts left at midfield. Second and five. Dorsey has Reggie Wayne at the 33. Clock stops while they move the chain. A gain of 17. Nice timing throw that time by Dorsey. Connecting with his favorite target this season, Reggie Wayne. 112 to go and the clock restarted. Dorsey comes right. And they get out of bounds and stop the clock with 103 to go. It's Jeremy Shockey, the backup tight end, number 88, with his second catch. You know, Mickey Andrews, he wants the clock to run, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him use a timeout if Miami gets another play because he's got to do something to stop this rhythm that Ken Dorsey's in right now. Auburn, Mississippi State underway. We go there when this one's in the history books. Jamal Reynolds, where are you? This is when Florida State needs their defensive end to make a play. On second down, the blitz comes. Wayne goes in the corner. And just a little bit off on the timing. Third and four. David Warren applying a little pressure inside, and you see the end of the play, just throwing a hair outside. Here's the hit on Dorsey. It was an inside stunt by David Warren and got there and got into the chest of the quarterback. Moss and King head to the left. Wayne comes right. Third and four. Dorsey down the middle, man. Moss, first and goal at the seven-yard line. 50 seconds to go. Timeout call. Good protection up front. The offensive line gives the quarterback time to find Santana Moss, and Miami is in business inside the 10. Time call. Hope you'll come back with us. Think you might. 50 seconds remaining. 24-20, state on top. But a first down and goal just inside the eight. And after Santana Moss's catch, we had some uh, conversation of an unpleasant nature in the Florida State secondary. Stanford Samuels, Chris Hope. Moss and King go wide left. Wayne comes wide right. One running back, that's Jackson. And motion, my gosh, from the junior 
Joaquin Gonzalez, number 73. And Vern, they were trying to go on a quick count. I mean, this was going to be a first sound signal, so you knew it was going to be quick, but Joaquin just a little over anxious. Here he is right here. You see Dorsey's not even under the center yet, so it's going to be a quick count. And Joaquin. That is the 13th penalty in the ball game against Miami. Now first and goal from the 13-yard line. King and Moss left. Dorsey back. Has time. Goes into the end zone. touchdown catch and Dorsey takes a beating but doesn't mind Ken Dorsey six of seven on the drive which went 68 yards in 51 seconds we talked about his poise we talked about his savvy Bobby Bowden knows this young quarterback doesn't play like a young quarterback Maturity beyond his years with a couple of the former Miami greats here to watch him, Bernie Kozar and Jim Kelly. How'd the Miami coaches like it? Good call, Larry Coker. Jeff Cheney, Travis Minor of the deep man. 46 seconds to go. Florida State with two timeouts left. Seavers with a kick. And this will be returned, taken by Miner at the 1. Back to the 15, spilled as he crosses the 20, and is down at the 22-yard line, the tackle made by Aaron Moser. Jeremy Shockey. You said it, Vern. Would he have ever dreamed of it? Mercer, the more physical tight end. Shockey, the more versatile receiving guy. And what a play for Jeremy Shockey. 42 seconds to go. Florida State has two timeouts. 42 seconds. Miami will rush three. Winky. Clock continues to run unless they use one of their timeouts. And they have now stopped the clock with 37 seconds to go as Robert Morgan makes the tackle. Uh, makes the catch, and Dan Morgan makes the tackle. Here is Winky into the flat. Travis Miner will try to scoot out of bounds. He does and stops the clock with 31 seconds to go. Philip Buchanan was right there. Avern, we've seen Munyon miss one field goal today, but he did make a 44-yarder in their last game against Maryland. So he's got the leg to kick one at that distance. That will require Florida State to hit about three more passes of significant yardage. Second down and 10, or first and 10, the sign was wrong. Here's a catch by Miner, and he's got a first down at the 45-yard line. Things happening so quickly that the down marker had not been changed, and it indicated second down. That was a first down play, and a pickup of 23. Here is Matt Munyon. They're putting him on red alert right now. <laughs> First and ten. 
One timeout left. Winky. it perfectly. He paid a bit of a price, but he knocked the ball loose from Anquan Bolden. Boy, you called it. I mean, he did pay a price on this. Leonard Myers is going to come over the top on this and times it perfectly and separates Bolden from the football, but he got the worst of that collision. And he appears to be okay. May have knocked the wind out of himself. They need to get to the 27-yard line to attempt a 44-yard field goal. Second and 10. 18 seconds to go. Winky comes left. He's got a man open. It's Menace at the 32. 10 seconds to go. Clock stops while they move the chain. He's got to do something quick here. Chris Wanky, he's got a first down. He can kill the clock. He's got the one timeout. The clock is moving right now, and they're still bringing people on the field. Five seconds to go. Four. Now the clock is stopped with five seconds remaining. Unbelievable. They've got to try the field goal now. Confusion in the last 10 seconds. It's happened a lot to Florida State today. This one, just mind-boggling. Now the ball is at the 32. They had plenty of time, Vern, to at least throw one more completion to make it an, an easier attempt on the field goal. Or even take a shot at the end zone if they wanted to. As it turns out, they had to waste the time out and try the long field goal. This will be either 49 or 50 for the tie, depending on the spot. I think it's going to be 49. We saw poor clock management at the end of the first half by Florida State, and again here at the end of the ball game. And it's just very, very uncharacteristic. Matt Munyon, walk-on freshman, not listed in the press book. You don't find his picture. 49 yards for the tie. He's got the distance. He does not have the kick. Miami has won. kick it looked like he caught it pretty solid burn he got a good boot into it it got up quick enough can you say wide right three unbelievable plenty of leg just not the right direction for Matt Munyon and that is a huge anvil that has been lifted from the shoulders of Butch Davis a thriller in the Orange Bowl. Miami wins it by three for Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. Vern Lundquist saying so long. This a presentation of CBS Sports.